When did the class clown went too far? Viewers edition. I told you we wanted to see your stories in the comments, and by golly, we're gonna read some of them. Story one. A football player, we will call him Nicholas, didn't show up to school for two and a half weeks. The day before he came back, the teacher informed us that he was gone because his mother and little sister had died in a car wreck. The class clown, Blaine, I don't care about protecting his identity, responded to the teacher, Damn, double homicide. The room was quiet for 20 seconds, but it felt like hours. The teacher stood up and looked him dead in the eyes and pointed at the door while yelling, Get the F out of my classroom. Blaine responded, Why? It was a joke. Then one of the other football players from across the room threw a pencil sharpener across the room and hit Blaine on the shoulder. The teacher then said, I'm not even sorry, and this isn't a debate, to get the hell out of my room into the hallway. I don't know what the teacher said to him in the hallway, but Blaine got kicked out of that class, so Nicholas luckily never had to deal with that what. It's so messed up how some people believe you can say anything about touchy subjects and claim it was dark humor. Dark humor only applies if it was actually funny, and if it's a touchy subject like that one, then you better pray it's the funniest joke in the world to cover that up. Holy crap, yeah, this is the epitome of too soon. And honestly, when it comes to Nicholas, it will probably always be too soon for a tasteless joke like that. I don't blame the teacher for reacting in that way, and frankly, I imagine a lot of people developed an opinion about Blaine that day that stuck with them. Story 2. There were these two boys that I hated with a passion in middle school. They weren't THE class clowns, but more like the unpopular, inappropriate, joking, dark humor class clowns. This was a couple years ago during the midst of COVID, so we had assigned seats in every single class. I was always put in the same group as them because our names were close together in alphabetical order. They became kind of popular with the boys, and soon other annoying, like-minded people would sneak to our lunch table when the teacher wasn't looking and make seriously messed up jokes. They would make jokes about R and make very inappropriate comments about the female teachers at our school. Their favorite subjects to make jokes about were racism, Judaism, and Hitler. The jokes they made really upset me, so most of the time I would eat my lunch as fast as possible and hide in the bathroom until it was time to go back to school class. The school year after that, we no longer had masks, social distancing, etc., so I thought I escaped them. But then, my best friend started dating one of them, and we almost had a huge fist fight over it when I told her she should break up with him. I told her about the jokes he made and that he was really sketchy, and she said the stuff he said was fine, and she would punch me in the face if I ever talked crap about her boyfriend again. They broke up a week ago for the same reasons I told her about. They dated for a good while, but ultimately split when the boyfriend got really possessive and started spreading rumors that they had intercourse in the school bathroom. I still hate him so much, and I really hope he gets the karma that he deserves. If it helps, people like that often do, though not always in obvious ways. Even so, sorry to hear you've had to deal with a guy like that, and to deal with your friend dating a creep is just the worst because... Where are you supposed to fall on the spectrum of being supportive to being concerned for them? Story 3. When I was younger, probably in 6th grade, we were talking about normal history stuff and taking notes. My teacher came to my desk and told me my older brother had passed due to an overdose and asked me if I wished to go home so he could contact my mother and he, my teacher, had unintentionally said it pretty loud. I said no and went to work with an assigned group of people. This boy started joking about my brother's death. I broke down crying, and the boy proceeded to make fun of me crying. Probably the worst day of my life. Story 4. Attending a German school on an exchange trip. As an American, naturally I get a lot of interesting questions. Most of them I'm comfortable answering. However, one kid jokes around about American school shootings, saying stuff like, I bet you enjoy those days off when shootings happen. I live 20 minutes from Oxford High School in Michigan and knew one of the victims personally. Was not amused. We don't talk anymore. Story 5. Story of my own. I was in grade 2. Yes, grade 2, and the teacher we had for most of the year and was extremely pregnant took about a week and a half off school. When she came back, she told us that her dad had just died, and she took some time off for grieving. My school was pretty relaxed about that, plus, from what I gathered, she was close with her dad. A boy with anger issues, and once threw a chair at myself as well as the pregnant teacher, told her he probably killed himself because you were such a disappointment. 
She burst into tears and left the room. He was laughing so hard, as well as some other boys in the class. She was a pretty crap teacher, but she was a good person and did not deserve that. Yeah, honestly, even if she wasn't a good person, no one deserves a comment like that. I understand in grade two, you're figuring out boundaries when it comes to that stuff, seeing what you can get away with. But uh, I wonder if that kid remembers saying that and regrets it, because honestly, if that were me, that would eat me up inside, even if I was only a second grader. Story six. In my school, clowns tended to know better than to take it too far. Even the well-liked teachers didn't put up with a lot of crap. This was especially the case for the computer lab teacher who was a sergeant in the National Guard. He could quite literally out-yell the combined voices of the entire school. Friendly guy, but definitely not the sort of person you wanted to pee off. I've seen wannabe clowns and troublemakers leave the computer lab in tears. His wife also worked at the school running the study hall, and they were made for each other. She was the second most intimidating faculty member. Story 7. Ah, damn, I have one. One of the class clowns in my high school decided he wasn't getting the reactions he wanted anymore, so he decided to say in a as much seriousness as possible that R didn't happen anymore, just didn't exist in modern society. He said it in a class discussion that almost had nothing to do with the topic. He chose the wrong class. I've never seen this teacher so serious or angry. As peers, we started in on the kid immediately, but as the teacher began to speak, silence blanketed us all. He calmly, but with a quiet pain and rage, explained that it does happen. It just doesn't happen to rich, entitled white boys like the class clown. His mother, grandmother, aunts, sisters, and wife had all been R'd not once, but multiple times, and he held something akin to survivor's guilt as he was the only one that it never happened to. The class clown cried that day and never made an attempt at getting a reaction ever again. It's been almost seven years since that moment, and I still think about it every day. Good on that teacher for putting the kid in his place, because that is the kind of thing that might have started off as just a super edgy joke with that class clown, but that's something some people believe, and as a joke is both in terrible taste and just not funny. I've had people in my life who survived R, and folks making light of it are one of the only times I genuinely threatened violence. Story 8. This reminds me of a class where the clown kid started to make jokes about depression and lack of parents in someone's life. Me and another dude in class both had extreme problems due to the fact that our fathers left us really early. While I was ignoring the comments, the moment the clown laughed about depression middle class, that dude got up from his seat, hit his table, and left the classroom breaking the door. At that, the clown still laughed, and I ended up getting angry and said loudly that he shouldn't take those things as a joke. Turns out his coping way with his own family problems was exactly what he did in class. Story 9. My story is mild in comparison to some of these. We were rehearsing for a school play. The girl who was cast in the lead had a bit of a reputation for being promiscuous. This was in middle school. During rehearsal, she was having trouble getting her hoodie zipped. This class clown then shouted out, You'll have to excuse her, she's not good at zipping things up. She only knows how to zip down. He got suspended for S harassment. Story 10. I have a story of my own. It wasn't really that serious, but I offended a lot of people that day. I was kind of a class clown all throughout my primary school years, and I had almost no filter and would just say whatever I wanted all the time and do some pretty crazy stuff. I was worse than a normal kid, though, as I had autism and ADHD along with SCD, and I would get in trouble pretty often and have to have a personal aid for my special needs. I have a lot of crazy stories, but I still think about this one almost seven years later. I was about nine, and I had a friend with alopecia who was almost completely bald, and I'm going to call Laura, and didn't wear a wig. People were pretty cool with it, and I was too. However, one day we were making avatars in technology class, and there was an avatar on the screen that was still default and did not have hair on it yet. Of course, seeing this avatar, I was reminded of Laura, who was sitting in the class. So in class, I blurted out something along the lines of, that default avatar looks like Laura. And then I started laughing hysterically, thinking that I made a pretty funny joke. However, nobody found it funny, and I look like a complete jerk. Laura didn't really hear the comment, but her friends did, and they were all pretty offended. The special ed teachers forced me to write an apology, and I couldn't even look at her when I gave it to her because I felt so ashamed. 
To this day, at 16 years old, I'm still pretty ashamed of what I've done, and now I can kind of laugh at it, but for a while I felt so bad about it, but I almost found myself crying years later because... I really didn't mean to make her feel upset, and I didn't know the severity of what I had said. Hopefully, Laura has forgotten about it, or that she didn't take offense from it. Hopefully, y'all could also take a laugh from the story as well. Hey, like I said, that is an age where we are testing boundaries, figuring out what is okay to joke about and what isn't, stuff like that. It sounds like your heart is in the right place. You apologized and recognized it wasn't cool. Certainly not nearly as bad as some of these other stories so I think you're okay. Story 11. Reminds me of the class clown at my school. I went to a rural Christian school in Center, Ohio, which also had an adjoining church. The pastor's grandson got in trouble for multiple things, including beating the crap out of another kid who had made fun of his haircut, throwing a King James Bible out the window of the Bible class entirely by accident. Actually, he was trying to kill a wasp, and eventually got expelled for getting ratted out for selling weed and doing lean in a math class, at least from what I heard. The kid did a lot of dumb jokes overall, but is still remembered for his craziness. Story 12. I have one. It's a classic. Basically, we were in fifth grade IT class. We were learning Python or some crap, coding in Notepad, and it was boring. On a Friday afternoon is where things changed, though. Since the IT monitors have more admin permissions, a kid decided to program a batch file that created a lot of folders and shut down some monitors using remote shutdown. It was funny, and he never got caught. I also did it once, and it was pretty cool. So yeah. Story 13. I have a story. Less the class clown going too far, more the class clown redeeming himself. So there was this boy who got on people's nerves a lot. However, near the end of my year, my last year, he got better, and at one point a giant mud wasp, he didn't let it in, a different doofus let it in, for the second time, the first time was getting maccas to eat in class, through the window and I had a phobia of wasps. No one wanted to try to get rid of it. Q, the reformed class clown, battled the wasp with a hat so it stopped flying, and when we noticed it was still in the classroom and still alive, he whacked it with his shoe, killing that demon instantly. Luckily, it was a solitary species, so no alarm pheromones, and that was the day Oscar redeemed himself. Also, he didn't pull any pranks or stuff like that. He just made stupid jokes no one laughed at and annoyed people. Ah, a class clown who doesn't even make people laugh. The worst kind of clown. But hey, I'm always here for a good redemption story, and Oscar the Wasp Slayer is a pretty good one. In fact, perhaps this is the part of the story where you see Oscar in a different light. Maybe this is when romance blooms. Sorry, I watched way too many movies with my time off. I've got rom-com brain. Story 14. Here's a story. I'm the victim here. I have Tourette's. If you don't know what that is, look it up or I can tell you. I have tics where I hit myself and say bad words when triggered. I'm quiet in class, don't want to be picked on, all of that, but I'm smart, so I answer a lot of questions. Once, I couldn't get a word out because I was ticking so much. I asked Teach if I could take a break. He said okay. When I came back in, the three class clowns were already plotting. They started saying words that I'd repeat or trigger my cursing tics, and everyone was laughing especially when they made me, a white German-American Texan girl, say the N-word with a hard R. Everyone thought it was hilarious until one of the three took it too far and made a hitting gesture to his head. I immediately started hitting myself as a tick in the face repeatedly until I was crying and my face was bruised and red. Everyone, even the other class clowns, had stopped laughing. No one was laughing except for that one boy. I ran out of class to the nurse, which I'm allowed to do in these situations, and I saw the boys being walked to the principal's office. As they walked by, the boy made a hitting gesture, and I hit myself again. He smiled, but I heard a smack, and his friends say, Dude, shut the F up. It's not funny. Never saw that boy again. The others got suspended for two weeks. Okay, to heck with those class clowns, aka bullies. I'm sorry, that is just awful behavior from them, though... I'm glad at least one of them seemed to realize that by the end. It's good they were suspended for that, though it hardly makes up for what you went through. Thanks for sharing your story, and just know, I think you're rad as heck. Story 15. I have two stories from the same class clown. One, he found out a history teacher was Jewish and lost her mother and grandparents in the Holocaust. 
spent the remaining two years he had her doing Nazi salutes and making terrible jokes about the Nazi party and the Holocaust. She left later that year. It's a shame she was truly kind and caring. Two, found out I was trans, gain on the spectrum, basically an infinite store of ammo for a bully. What he seemed to have forgotten is that in my school, every LGBTQ plus kid knew each other, and there was about 200 in total. Not to mention I was the youngest in that group and had an almost familial relationship with most of the kids in this group. He left the school one year after he made the history teacher leave, almost to the day. Story 16. One time, my class had P.E. and were playing indoor hockey. The teacher specifically said to not swing the rackets because it could hurt someone. Of course, there was a group of boys that did the complete opposite of that, and one of them swung it right into a girl's face. I remember standing at the edge of the court because I didn't feel like playing and seeing her walk down the gym with a teacher with the trail behind her. The racket that was used had snapped from the impact. The thing that got me and the other girls so angry was the fact that when the game continued, the boys kept on playing like nothing happened. And yes, they were still swinging the rackets. When the class ended, there was still blood on the floor and I ended up having some kind of panic attack in the bathroom because it was the first time I saw that much real blood. And I'm sure it made a lot of other kids uneasy as well. And some of the boys were joking about it. I caught up with the girl later and it turned out she got cut down to the cheekbone and had to get inner and outer stitches. She's probably going to be stuck with that scar for the rest of her life. I am absolutely furious right now reading that. The fact that they screwed around and broke the rules is almost to be expected with D-bags like that. But to hurt someone and then go on joking about it is just awful. To have no guilt over something like that is just gross. Story 17. Not a crazy story, but when I was in elementary school, fifth grade, there were these two kids, Sincere and Kevin. They both liked to smuggle more than one carton of orange juice at lunch, which wasn't allowed, and had a contest on who could drink them faster. Soon, everyone who sat at the table started stealing like five orange juice cartons and giving them to the kids. At one point, they each had like at least 15 cartons. They would hide the empty ones under the table so the teachers wouldn't see. One day, one of the worst teachers that we all hated came over to the table. I had been the one to steal the orange juice that day, and they all snitched on me. I was yelled at by the teacher, and she claimed to have told the principal, but I had never gotten in trouble. I thought about it with the others, about how I got in trouble for orange juice. We all thought it was pretty funny. Story 18. In my high school, many of the girls thought it would be funny to blow up condoms like balloons and toss them around. A few days before the COVID lockdowns, we had all been instructed to clean out our lockers and strip down the classrooms of posters and stuff in preparation for the closures. The chick whose locker was next to mine thought it would be funny to inflate a used condom and launch it into the hallway. Not sure what or who it landed on, but I knew it would not have been pretty. Everyone else was like, what the F? Story 19. Okay, here's my story. I have autism and am especially sensitive to short, loud noises, e.g. clapping. There was this group of boys in my 8th grade English class who were all obviously class clown type of people. One day, they were giving each other high fives, and of course, that startled me and I jumped out of my seat. The boys thought that it was hilarious. They immediately started clapping really loud and even convinced the other boys in the class and some of the girls to join in. It got so bad that I had to cover my ears, curl up under my desk, and just cry. Everybody was laughing until they looked up at my English teacher. He was not laughing. Honestly, I've never seen him so mad at anyone to this day. He was the only one who stood up for me. I don't know what happened to the boys, but I can assume they got punished. Thank you, Mr. M. You're a decent guy. Ugh. Like... I know all of us did crap when we were younger that we aren't proud of. We've all said and done things that, at the time, we didn't realize was kind of cruel. It is part of being a kid, but, like, even kids have to realize when they're making someone cry under their desk, they are being little monsters. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but I'm glad Mr. M had your back. Just know, I would have your back as well. Story 20 Mine happened in college. I was in a friend group, and the head of the group was the one we'll refer to as the class clown. He made a lot of crappy jokes, but I'm going to just explain the top two. One, my freshman year in college, my grandma got diagnosed with COVID after Thanksgiving and was quarantined. It got so bad she had to go to the hospital, and after weeks of battling, she ended up dying of COVID pneumonia three days before Christmas. 
Needless to say, I was emotionally destroyed. I lived with my grandma almost my entire life. When I got back to campus after the break and he found out what happened, he would constantly make dead grandma jokes like, man, I can't wait for my grandma to die so I can have all her stuff, and things like that. I told him to knock it off several times, but he would only stop for about an hour before starting back up. Two, he made a I am a depressed high schooler so I cut myself all the time joke with two past self-harmers in the room, including me. We both called him out for it, and he just blamed it on the fact that he was a little tipsy. Story 21. I was a class clown, but only by the barest definition. I constantly made weird noises and bad jokes in elementary school and would do stupid stuff throwing balled-up paper at the teacher or running around the classroom when the teacher's back was turned. It eventually progressed to me kicking other students, and at one point I threw a chair at a teacher because another student egged me on. Obligatory background info, lots of childhood trauma and abandonment issues made me crave attention of any kind. Therapy and self-reflection have done wonders for me, and I've made amends with people I've negatively affected. Honestly, glad we're ending with this story, because it does show that some of these kids are dealing with bigger issues. I'm glad you were able to make amends and find some help, and I'm really glad you were willing to share this with us. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.